Do they hurt you? Claire. Oh, I remember. Hey, hey, take it. I mean, what in a moist barrel of fun is... I just want to go home. Resident Evil is inching closer to its roots. As the series continued to move towards more action-heavy ideals, the original revelations gave Capcom the opportunity to freely experiment with the formula. The result was an added dose of the franchise's horror traditions. Revelations 2 further embraces this direction by emphasizing survival horror and offers a meaningful story to the decade's long continuity. The story takes place between Resident Evil 5 and 6, and features four playable protagonists. Series mainstay Claire Redfield and newcomer Moira Burton are kidnapped by unknown assailants and taken to an island prison facility. From there, things only get worse with hideous monsters, evil experiments, and deadly traps. Barry Burton makes a welcome return for the first time since his brief cameo in Resident Evil 3, and he sets out to rescue his daughter with the unlikely help of the enigmatic Natalia Korda. Subtle nods and connections to past events in the Resident Evil canon will certainly reward longtime fans. Revelations 2 is steeped in franchise mythology and at times feels like a direct sequel to Resident Evil 5. Those freaks had some of the same symptoms as Ouroboros. Ubo Robo? It's a virus some bad people used in Africa a couple of years ago. The question is, how did it get out here? Four core episodes comprise the main story, while two bonus episodes put unique twists on the gameplay. Each core episode features two separate campaigns that can be played solo or in local co-op. Unfortunately, online co-op isn't supported, but sharing the journey with a friend greatly enhances the proceedings thanks to the differing playstyles between each main character. Moira doesn't use firearms, but can blind enemies with her flashlight and find hidden items in the environment. Barry is a walking tank with immense firepower, and Natalia offers valuable intel by pointing out hidden enemies. The character dynamics are further explored in later episodes, offering interesting ways for players to work together. If you opt to play alone, switching between characters is seamless, and the AI-controlled partners are competent enough. See? You can do it. Environments are mostly indoors, but occasionally expand into larger areas to explore and battle groups of enemies. The claustrophobic indoor environments add a great deal of tension to each encounter, so there's a sense of relief when things open up. Harder difficulty settings limit ammo, emphasizing the value of every bullet. Stealth is critical in saving ammo, but sneaking into close range could cost you with one false move. It's okay. The enemy variety throughout the seven-hour campaign is limited, including the standard infected and an assortment of weaponized experiments. Fortunately, the harrowing boss battles help alleviate the repetition. There are tons of hidden items littering the environment, including ammo, keys, and treasure to upgrade your character and weapons. Custom parts can be attached to individual firearms that allow for standard bonuses like more damage or faster reload, to more unorthodox upgrades like charged shots. It's fun to experiment with different combinations, and finding these hidden parts makes exploration feel rewarding. In addition to weapons customization, each of the four playable characters has upgradable skills. The majority of upgrades are straightforward, like faster knife swings or getting more health from herbs, but a few require you to change your playstyle to maximize the benefits. One such skill encourages you to constantly switch weapons by making the first bullet from a gun deal more damage. While it's nice that not every skill is a mere generic increase to damage or health, having to play a specific way to reap the rewards is constrictive. And now it's time for you to show me what it can do. Raid mode is back from the first revelations, and it's better than ever. Players are tasked with completing over a hundred increasingly difficult missions that range from exterminating enemies to defending positions. Gold and XP are earned to further level up characters and weapons in a separate progression from the core campaign. The mode is RPG heavy as each monster's strength is level based, and some are equipped with buffs like shields or elemental effects, causing flame damage and so on. The best part is that it features playable characters, enemies, and environments not seen in the story mode. Veteran fans will surely giggle with joy when they recognize classic locales and marquee monsters. It's a rewarding addition to the core campaign, and unlocking later missions to see what horrors they hold is always thrilling. Additionally, raid mode can be played online with a friend to help alleviate any grind. While the visuals are not graphically impressive, they are enough to get by. 
Certain monsters look plain and lack the level of detail that could have made them more memorable. Fortunately, the steady frame rate helps make up for it, even while playing co-op. They're gonna gang up on us. We have to get out of here. Resident Evil Revelations 2 strikes the perfect balance between new and old. Returning plot threads and the emphasis on ammo management will please franchise veterans, while anyone can appreciate the thrill of intimate monster encounters and distressing boss battles. With a replayable campaign, multiple protagonists, and a lengthy raid mode, all for a bargain price, there's plenty to keep fans coming back. You can't just leave me. No, 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 no. No. It's too dangerous for you to come along. I'm not gonna be any safer here. <sighs> Is there a little girl on this planet that will listen to me?